Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. So enjoying a lovely, lovely walk with Jackie and the pups. Oh, I keep saying this, but our life's just manic at the moment. And I've got to say, it fries your brain. Just got too much to do. Too much to do home and away, home and at work, if you like. Um, nothing bad, but just like sort of overloaded, really. Um, and it strains your brain. And if you're a subscriber and you're a regular watcher of our vlogs, you can see that, you can see that. Last week's vlog, two lots of stuff back to front, um, and, and so on and so forth. It's like, you're doing stuff you enjoy, but sometimes you start rushing to get stuff actually achieved and finished. And I'm someone that double checks and triple checks everything, and obviously the minute you don't, when your brain's like this, it doesn't get done properly. So. Bit of time to clear your brain out in the countryside. And just looking at the lovely dead arm of the river here, covered in floating algae. And thinking, oh, this is my childhood. My whole childhood was spent down by the river, really. If it wasn't there, it was on holiday at the seaside rock pool. Um, and I thought, God, oh, that was a lovely dead arm like where I used to where I grew up down to St. Mill. And you find baby pike there. I'd love a baby pike in a fish tank. I used to keep them all the time as a kid. Just perfect replica pike, but miniature. And I thought, how cool would that be at the falconry centre in the British wildlife section? One of the aquariums with a pike in. What an icon. More to do now. So we're at Icarus Falconry. Orion! James has come to learn. Orion. A little bit about falconry, a little bit about on, owl keeping. And of come course on. part of that is Ryan. we're showing him not just what's come nice on. about owls, but actually what's really annoying, come irritating on. and difficult about owls. And this guy, Orion, my goodness, he's the perfect example lately. He's had a lot of time off with COVID into this year. This is a bird that does the job very, very well for many years. His brain has totally switched off to his job and it takes daily repetition to actually switch him back on. It's very different, very different from pretty much any diurnal bird of prey that you work with, which can be a few
few days, a couple of days, to switch back into Orion. gear after a, a rest period. Orion. So this guy that flies whole field lengths to gas, is flying all over the country outside of vents. He's not even flying eight feet. And this is a partly appetite and weight based, of course, but and that's away from way what away from what the problem is. It's nothing to do with appetite. It's all to do with mental disposition of an owl and of, of this owl in particular. And it's a regular interaction, daily, starting at small baby steps to get his head and his tiny owl mind back into gear. Doing what, what he's done for years and years. They switch off. They go. It's almost like they forget years of years of repetition. Come on then, Orion. And those people that think that falconers or birds of prey trainers starve their birds to do something, I can tell you now. At this point, with this owl's brain, we could not feed it every single day and come out here and do this, and it'll drop down dead of starvation. It will not make any difference at all to his psychology right now. Very unusual things to work with. Um, I started keeping owls. Uh, now, bless them, they're the bane of my life. <laughs> when you are always busy, always short for time, my goodness me, owls are the ones that can suck up your time much more than any, any diurnal bird of prey. But of course they are gorgeous, unless you're a small furry animal. We'll give him a couple of seconds. You can see he's not even focused on Joe. Joe's worked with him and imprinted him for a baby. He's doing his waggle dance, which says he's a little bit thinking about it, but not really. Who'd want to work with an owl? <laughs> See from flying this. I just just gone to him, got his attention, just to try and get him to focus. Orion. This Orion. Is probably as, as, as difficult as it gets with any owl. This guy's probably had three weeks of work put into him now, and it is three steps forward and probably three and a half steps backwards. Yeah, possibly, but he's got to at some point. This is his job. Oh, this is his job. Now, if this was your first bird of prey, you'd probably be loving every minute of it and you're getting somewhere tiny baby steps. Oh my God, 30 years in, I've got to tell you. I'm a bit bored. <laughs> so on that note, enjoy the rest of the vlog. Well, Joe's going to go alone. <laughs> Maybe it is the shoes. <laughs> Look at that. So just having Jame here as an added distraction yes. has put him off. Just because it's one more thing to think about. Do you want to make a little sound? <laughs> so Ursula and Ryan, Hello. Uh, <laughs> they're going to go and fly this guy. He only flies indoors. He's useless outdoors because anything in the sky like a plane makes him freeze. And he's my best school bird. But Ursula's kind of took over the sort of downtime flying of this guy to keep him flying. He's very cute, isn't he? He's gorgeous, yes, and he flies very well. He does. One of my birds that flies very well. <laughs> <laughs> and all because he gets so much work, he comes to so many school visits. Yeah. And he's quite a cute little character, isn't he? He's quite nice to work with. That's it, that's it. That's and he makes it funny, so make him do that again, Ursula. Make him. Force him. Like, what you... I'm camera shy. The camera. Cracker Jack, the white faced owl. Enjoy. <laughs> Just checking back in at the wildlife pond and have a look how the whole area is now completely changed. And we've seeded it, but a lot of wild stuff's come in there. So if you have a look over here, you'll see there's loads of poppy seeds. Wherever there's been poppies, you disturb the ground. Doesn't matter how many years later, and they'll, they'll come to the surface of the light and they'll germinate. And then this way, as you come around, a lot of stinging nettles because the stinging nettles thrive wherever there's been a lot of rubbish dumped. And they've been left on this, the, sort of the wild woodland flower mound. It's still flowering well, 
Um, it's going over now this time of year. All the stinging nettles have really took over. It's not a problem. Um, we'll be ripping those out and digging out and forking out a, a fair few of the roots. I don't, I don't want there not too many stinging nettles around here because they are great food and, and great habitat for loads of invertebrates. But if you have a look, they've kind of, have a look over here. Although you can see the mulling and uh, the, the seed heads now of the foxgloves above, you can see it's just a big patch of stinging nettles. And if you come around this way, we've still got foxgloves over here. We've got the log pile. Where am I looking? Where are you? I've lost the plot. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's so difficult doing it backwards. It's hiding behind that. There's a log pile. I've got loads of thistles over here. All great habitat. It's much better than it was. If you remember the whole area around the pond here, it was just a desert. It was just flat soil. And obviously all the newts in here and the frogs and the toads, they'd got across a lot of open ground to go and hide away in log piles in the stone wall behind me. So now it's becoming much better for them. They can come out in the evening, they can find invertebrates, they can hide from the tawny owls and such like. And we'll let it mature. But as I always say, you've got to manage these things. So we're going to pull out a lot of the nettles. We're going to pull out stuff we don't want. And we've also already planted a shade flower mix over there, wild flower mix over there. Because obviously, pretty mature horse chestnut tree, conker tree. And that'll be sort of an end of summer job now. And then next year, it'll all be different again. But what I've been doing in here, as I net off the duckweed, which grows huge, grows like bacteria, like doubles every day. As I net that off, I look in my net, and have you seen in the previous vlog, little tiny baby newts. Now mostly smooth newts, but I don't care. It's great that the newts, that have, this, this pond has only been here a year or so, it's already got amphibians breeding in it. And it's not that big, I don't know. It's six to eight feet long. Yes, having a huge pond in your garden's great. Something the size of a washing up bowl still makes a home for wildlife. All wildlife, birds drink from it, birds may bath in it. You'll get amphibians in the tiniest pond in your garden. So as I've always said, bring some water into your garden and you will bring more wildlife than with any other single thing you put in your garden. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. Just have a quick check in on the outdoor reptile enclosure. Very cool today. 17 degrees, cloudy. Got these hardy UK reptiles, they're out anyway. Hoping for a glimpse of sunshine, no doubt. Gorgeous. So sticking on our theme, these are common toads, which are, for me, a really important educational tool. And incredibly interesting animals, of course, to keep. Equally, they're good in their top up of live food. There's one to the left, one to the right, and one behind. Look at that, straight down the hatch. Always a ravenous thing, a toad of any species, more or less. And they'll eat anything they can cram into their mouths, and exceptionally good eyesight. And a, usually a crepuscular way of life. Although, like many nocturnal animals, of course, they make use of the sun's ultraviolet rays and heat, and they're quite happy to come out and sunbathe occasionally, even on a hot summer's day. Absolutely fantastic. And one of my favourite amphibians is the common toad. So we're in the snake room, I've just got home from work, and it seems there's a party going on. Kira and Jack, and look what I've got. I come home and I find them playing with my bearded dragon lizards, look at them. So, which is your favourite, Jack? Which is all the animals I've shown you, which is the favourite you've seen so far? This one. Be honest. Um, this one. This one, a bearded dragon. Mm. You can't not love a bearded dragon, they're gorgeous, they're friendly. What's your favourite? Probably this one because I don't like snakes. Really? Yeah. So we're basically, we're in my snake room. There's 57 snakes plus umpteen hatchling snakes. And what do they like best?
bearded dragon lizards. Come on. So these guys here, they need a bit of educating in what's the best kind of reptile. And of course we know it's snakes. These guys, a bit of bearded dragon love going on here. And I haven't drank my beer, but they've also eaten to most of my tea when I come home tonight. <laughs> Thank you guys. Smile. It won't hurt you. <laughs> The best thing is, these guys are like top vlog fans, so it's really good to meet them. So we're gonna go, we're gonna put a bit of dragons away. These guys are now gonna have a crash course in handling snakes, and their mum, who's terrified of snakes, actually did touch one. So all is good. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Check out the rest of the vlog. <laughs> Uh, what's going on? What have you caught? They're both oh. full of... Oh no! Tell us what you've caught. Gareth, what are they? Snails! Have a look. So, a minute ago you told us that you're going to take those home and you're going to put them in a pan with lemon juice and some garlic butter and you're going to eat them, is that right? No. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. <laughs> ew, ew, no, what are they? Uh, oh, they're biting. They're nibbling. They are. Yeah, they have got little, they have got rasping. Oh, well, yeah. they're connecting together. Uh-oh. Oh, no. There'll be thousands of them soon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ew, I know what you're speaking about. <laughs> I'm going to be drunk. They're pretty cute, aren't they? They're all different, these thugs, though. Oh. We had to have his... Brilliant. And then she can so this week's vlog was going to be more snaky, but we've put all the snaky baby snaky clips into another video coming out next Wednesday. So you can see all the little snakes we've produced this year. That is amazing, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Vietnamese blue beauty snake, absolutely. Oh, beautiful baby snakes. But you can see all of these and more in a separate video our baby snakes 2021 look at that so the next clip on the vlog was kind of recorded thinking we're going to have a lot more snakes in the vlog this week but check it out anyway because it's a beautiful snake but these guys should be in a standalone video next week we're just about to do a standalone video about a couple of my favorite snakes but just have a look at this before we do this is my second favorite snake I think my female false water cobra is still my favourite. Look at this. This is our male yellow tail Kribo. Look at the size of this animal. What a massive beast of a colubrid snake. And look at the colours of a yellow tail Kribo. That is absolutely gorgeous snake. And out here in the sunshine, you can really see some of the colours on this snake's body. It's an indigo snake family, the dry mark on, don't forget. So you've got that beautiful iridescence. I don't know if you can come in, Tommy, and just see sort of the iridescence on its scales, that sort of oil on water effect on these big scales. Absolute stunner, if I don't say myself, if I don't say so myself. A really, really, don't go down any holes. A really, <laughs> really beautiful snake. Now I'm not quite six foot tall, but you can get the idea. This snake, I don't know. This snake's seven or eight feet long for sure, and still growing, and still growing. Hope those of you that like your snakes have enjoyed this week's vlog. Seen some of our hatchlings hatch out. Enjoy the rest of it. Look at that. Trio. Left to right, peacock, red admiral, painted lady. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Painted ladies, highly migratory. It's amazing to think the first generation of painted ladies in Britain this summer have flown all the way from Europe. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Two and a half inch wings, wingspan and you've flown that far across open water. It's been an amazing year for Red Admiral Butterflies. Again, first generation here will be migratory. Absolutely amazing year for them. And considering it's been a dreadful spring and summer and a really bad insect and butterfly year, 
now it's late summer we're getting a little bit more going on oh my god i've just seen another hornet hoverfly so here's a couple of amazing hoverfly species here have a look at these i'm gonna try oh it's too, too nervous it's too windy hold on these are amazing big you can get a bit of focus i'm gonna see if i can hold the end of this flower so it doesn't move now i've got to focus one-handed so there's a stunning hoverfly species look at that guy he's big i just can't believe the hornet hoverfly so a little bit windy out here's a bit a bit of wind noise but don't forget if you want to see this magnificent bald eagle flying for yourself I know. in the amazing settings look at this of Holmby House the beautiful gardens which are out of sight from this video and the beautiful Northamptonshire countryside where this guy soars and flies above don't forget come and see us at Icarus Falconry and the grounds of the Holdenby House estate go online holdenby.com get your tickets online and come and see us on a Saturday or a Sunday up until October it's been a fantastic summer we've met so many lovely people and don't forget that ticket gets you it gets you access to the beautiful historic gardens it gets you access to the falconry center you get to see all our birds we put on a flying display at least once a day and at least once a day an animal talk you could meet hedgehogs rats creepy crawlies huge snakes who knows it depends on the day and what i feel like i don't want to be bored i like to show you guys something different almost every week holdenme.com come and see us but for now I hope you've enjoyed the video. I think that's all for this week. This week's vlog. Check out our other videos. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Helps us no end. See you soon.